evening, King Speakers. Are you tonight? Yes. Yes. It is an absolute pleasure to be back in this club after a year of absence. I've got to say, I don't know who to found this new venue, but it is absolutely amazing and far, far, far better than the previous one, the Commander Bar. Anyway, I've got a lot to cover, so let's further ado. So, planning and goal setting. It's one of these speeches from the Leadership Excellence Series that teaches you how to become a better leader. So you might be saying goal setting, leadership, all of that all mesh together. We're going to have an overview of the topic tonight. Let's find out. So, a goal. Can anyone tell me what a goal is? The definition of a goal. Achieving an objective. Achieving an objective. Let's have another one. An aim. An aim, yes. But I would look at the picture and I would think about what's beyond this uh, scoring goal. It's achieving something good. Something okay. good. Okay. Carrying on from that. Carrying, Carrying on from that as a team. Because there's 11 people that are all playing their part. Midfield, defender, attack, and goalkeeper to make sure that this, the ball hit the goal of the team score. Whatever team you support, I don't care. <laughs> A goal is a specific objective you and your team must achieve. This is what the definition of, of a goal for this presentation is. And the, ones, the one word I would really like to draw the attention there is specific. You could also say that a goal is pretty much target, which is a bit of, a, of synonym, with a specific objective there. And this is not a, not a one-man show, one-man man. This is a team effort. Now, Let's cover some more definitions, shall we? What's the definition of like planning? What do you? What, what would you define planning? Defining a means to an end. A means to a, a, a means to an end. I like I like that. I really like this definition, but I just, cause I've, it has so many connotations, good and bad. Does the end justify the means and so on? So I really like this definition. Can okay, let's have some more, more, more contribution from the floor. Yes, please. Um, to strategically think of ways of achieving a goal or a task. To strategically think of ways of achieving a goal. I really like that because it links back to the goal and there's a word I love there, strategically. Strategic. It's a very important point. Yes, please. Um, not just looking at the goals but also looking at the risks. Looking at the risks. I really like that one as well because anticipation. I was thinking of what's the worst that can go, go wrong. So. And also this question, the why, the where, the when, and so on. The definition is, of a plan is, pretty much a blueprint for achieving goal. And I like the word blueprint because when you think of a blueprint, you think of all these old engineering blueprints on planes and stuff that they used to do in the 1960s and 70s. So I really, really like that word there. And again, it just links back to your goal. It's a map on how to fulfill the goal. Now, the one thing we have to bear in mind with goals are we just have to read, we have to go back to this word specific. And the one question I have is are you smart enough? Has anyone heard the term smart goals? You can see that quite a few people have. So let's just go back to the requirement of a smart goal one by one. So a smart goal, the first S is specific. Is the goal specific enough? Which also links back to this following one. Is it measurable? Is there really a, me a measure in numbers or a, a metric that you can really, really harness that you can measure to say the goal has been met, the goal has not been met? Might be a certain percentage of people in those masks. We've got a distinguished club program which kind of fits into the, the goal scene. For me, for the division contest on Saturday, it is my measure is I want to, I want to have 100 people in the room. So that's my own measurement. So really, if you can quantify this as a number, so much for the better. But the A stands for actionable. And the, some people might say, well, a goal, is a goal and a vision the same thing? A vision is more something that's kind of blue sky sinking and really up in the air, whereas a goal is a, something that might be part of a vision, but can actually be far more specific than that and can be action. If you have a vision of, say, I would like to bring peace in the world. A very noble vision, but is it really actionable? Yes or no? As if you say, I would like to have peace in Syria, for example. I would like the peace treaty that was signed last month to go back on its feet and help to throw again in Aleppo. 
that's a little bit more specific and therefore a little bit more actionable. What are the other one? Realistic. If a goal is not realistic, if you say, well, tomorrow I would like to walk on water across the serpentine over there because it would be easier to go across the floor, yeah. It's a very novel goal, but I don't think it's really, it's really realistic. When I was learning how to swim, some guy bamboozled me and said, you've got the best swimming teacher, that, that girl Celine, because she even walks in the water. When I was nine years old, I was a bit naive, I believed it at the time. I don't think I, I had a vision in my head of she must have some giant shoes filled with air and she might, might walk on water. You can actually walk on water if it's asked that way. Anyway, timely. Do we have the time? Because time is money at the end of the day. We also always have constraints in what we can achieve in terms of stuff. So really bear this, bear, bear this small smart goal, smart objective in mind when planning for, planning for something. It's going to be a bit of a mindset to adopt, but really, really bear that in mind. But now, how do you go about setting goals in the first place? Is there a blueprint or a process you can go through? This is kind of where the whole planning thing comes in. And the one thing I always urge people to do when they're thinking about goals is start about the bigger picture and the vision. It might be something that might be pie in the sky, a little bit ambitious or something like that, but really, really always start with the big picture. Why do you people think it's important to start with a vision? So, so you know where, where you're going. So that you know where you're going. Or what you want to achieve. So, yeah. that you know where, so that you know where you're going and you know what you want to achieve. Yes, please. Um, it's also motivational. It's also motivational. It's something that can really rally and inspire people other. It's funny because this last few days ago, I was at a political conference in Birmingham. And there's a politician there that started talking about vision, I want to have a vision for transport and so on. And then someone cut him off and said, well, as a politician, you should not have a vision because visions are expensive and the taxpayers are then fitting the money. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, that guy actually has a point in some respect, the taxpayer does fitting the money. But if, if we vote for politicians that don't have a vision, that don't have man are just managing things, it doesn't really make me dream, really. Or if we didn't have these visionaries, the world would be a far worse place today, really. So, really start with a dream. Yes, be Alia. Michelle. Yes. Not, not Alia. Okay, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> um, do you mean like if you mean like ideal? Yes. Object. Yes. If that's what you mean, there is a whole discipline in its own right that is devoted to how on earth the ideal ever translates down into reality. Yeah. That's what I that's pretty much what I what I mean by what I mean by it. it's an ideal, a vision. But how do you translate into reality then is really the question that we have to answer there. Because it's like it can be very difficult. So let's just go, go, scroll down the steps one by one. The other thing when we're planning for goal is it involve others. It could be rallying them around that, that vision you just put forward. Or if it's something maybe a bit more managerial, a bit more specific, getting consultation on what the, what the people want. I'm doing a project at work at the moment where I'm the third person in line that has just the third person to innovate a project. We've lost sight of the initial specification as a result. And it might very well be that my company may have to cancel it or get back to the old provider or something like that because we really lost sight of the vision, but we also failed to involve the others at the right stage. Whereas now it's just a little bit too late to do that. So really, always involve them. Whether it's rallying, rallying them around the vision or asking, what would you like? What do you think? Now really we have to consider the key components of a vision. And I, if you think about a, a vision itself, let's just take a smartphone, for example. A smartphone was just Steve's job vision back about 10, 15 years ago, and he said, I would like a phone that can do all this cool scene, that can be an MP3 player, and so on. And that vision was eventually fulfilled. How did he go about that? By breaking it down into its own <coughs> components. There might very well be a lot of components there that would be all fitting together seamlessly, like, like the intricate machinery of that watch, but really break down the components apart one by one. It might very well be easier said, easier said than done, but really just break it apart. 
Even the most beautiful, most intricate piece of machinery or the beautiful painting is just an addition of many small components put together on that one small one. Henry Ford once said, Henry Ford once said something, something along the line of, no task is complicated if you break it apart into small tasks. Mm -hmm. Really bear that one in mind. Mm -hmm. And the last one is to review the progress constantly. Just communication between all the value stage, the argument just goes through this planning process, this goal setting for it. Review the progress you're making towards that goal. Maybe the goal is not ambitious enough. Maybe you have to revise. Maybe you have to revise it. I personally like to say to people, it, it's always good to be ambitious and to aim high. But sometimes the reality doesn't always match your expectations. So always be an eye and review it, and be conservative when planning. Now, how do we really go about this planning process? Well, fundamentally, it's all these questions are on the back of the picture there: why, where, when, how, what. But really, in the case of process, the how is the one who should really start with this. And the, the advantage of this planning process is that it will really help you reinforce or go, just reinforce any goal that you may have. Because you say, this is the goal we have in mind, how do we get, how do we get about fulfilling it? So that makes it a lot stronger and that just feeds into and creates momentum towards fulfilling that goal. And really, planning in advance and linking it with going and always looking towards the future. One year down the line, ten, five years down the line, maybe ten years down the line. The further down the line you go, the little further it becomes because we can't predict the future. The future is chaotic by, na by nature. But really, why do you plan for something? Because you're thinking ahead about the future. If you're looking towards the past as an inspiration, maybe you're a beautiful group, but you're thinking about the future. And planning things in advance helps coordinating decisions. It seems like common sense, and in many respects, it is common sense. But sometimes there are people out there who say, oh, planning is a little bit boring, we can just improvise things and forget about that. They are like, who can tell me what the five P's or six P's are, please? Proper planning prevents this poor performance. <laughs> It's the same from the, I think, the British Army or the American Army, but there's a lot of truth into that. Because if you look at what they're doing, what they might be doing on the battlefield, or maybe something on a much smaller scale, there's a lot of elements to consider. And the more you can think about the, what can go wrong in advance, the easier it becomes. And the efficient use of resources, of course. If you think what can go wrong, you can have an idea of the resources you might need or you may not need to meet your goals. Now, obviously, planning is a step, what is a stepwise process, and we need to go back to what we said earlier. The first step is to establish your strategy. I really like the word, the use of the word strategy because strategizing for seeing can be extremely powerful. And it's asking that question: How are we going to go about fulfilling this objective? How are we going to do this? And just brainstorm all the options because there's a who here is interested in aeronautics and space? Anyone interested in space here? Quite a few people. When, can it, when Kennedy said to NASA, I want you guys to put a man on the moon, the first step that NASA asked you to ask them is how are we going to do that? And you have no idea the many different types of options that they're explored. We'll say, we could have one giant rocket that we're going to send to the moon, we could have two rockets that are sent separately. Or we could have a smaller rocket that's still quite big, but just how do you manage it in orbit? Th three different options were explored. They choose one in the end. Because it was better by some metric, it was also worse by some other metric, but the how is really the first step in the process. Now identify the strengths and weaknesses. Say, to take a small example of Toastmaster Club, <coughs> I would like this club to become present and distinguish this year. What are the weaknesses? We don't have enough members, what are the strengths? We don't have enough members, but they're very dedicated. Can you leverage the two together? This is really what this whole process of strength weaknesses is all about. Can my, can my strengths leverage my weaknesses? This is why I'm such a fan of the, of the CRC process of evaluation, command, recommend, command. Because we can actually leverage your strengths to mitigate against all weaknesses. Really always, always use Never lose sight of the leverage effect. 
preempting possible obstacles, as someone said earlier. What can go wrong? A lot of things can always go wrong. But always ask yourself that question. In industry, you have people that are paid a lot of money sometimes to do just that, to think about the worst that can happen. I'm from a nuclear industry by background. What's the worst that can happen? A nuclear reactor can melt down. How do we prevent that? What type of accident can, can do that? Well, we are going to get it right. Fukushima is one example. But the whole logic, the whole thinking behind this was what can go wrong? Then you assign responsibilities. You start to identify, you start to plan ahead. You're going to do that, 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 and so on, and so on. And you can modify things as needed. <coughs> now I'll quickly conclude seeing because I'm very aware of uh, I'm very aware of time as timekeeper has said, and you can go on for hours on this topic, but you say that whatever you do, whether you strategize your plan or you decide on your <coughs> communication is always key at every step of the process. Really seek involvement from others. It could be any point of view. Any point of view can be a very useful point of view. Really get <coughs> involved with others. Having more people involved with more creativity, more ideas on how to solve problems. 20 different people in the room, 20 different ideas on how to solve problems, potentially. Don't underestimate that. Diverse team can perform a lot better. And they really invite a lot of problem solving. You can just put all the ideas to the floor and everyone from their ass and on how to solve it. And last but certainly not least, it will really enhance the commitment you get from others. Now, we sadly don't have enough time for Q&A, but I will be taking questions at the break. If you want to get in touch with me, here are my details. I'm sure that Suzanne also can, can pass these slides on. I will be emailing you as well so you can email them around. That's it. It's a vast subject. I could go on for hours. I'm already on time. So I'll pass it around to Master.